Welcome everybody, we are here in Ibiza on our company retreat and today we wanted to give you a little insight into how Styler fits into the e-commerce market and how the e-commerce market in general is shaping up. So we've seen in the past a lot of very drastic changes in the e-commerce and CMS spaces, uh, all sort of around the idea of how users can be empowered to develop and create a really great e-commerce experience. And um, it seems like those changes are predominantly in a range where it's difficult or more and more difficult actually for uh, small merchants, small medium-sized merchants to get along with them and to really make uh, a great use of them. And that's why we want to talk today about how Styler can make a contribution here. And I'm joined today by Alex Kong, our CTO, and by Fabian Frey, our head of products. Thanks both for being here. Um, yeah, if we start right in, um, the changes that we've been seeing, Fabian, have been um, sort of developing from a monolithic um, if you say uh, experience that where you have one system that caters for everything and they more and more go away from that. How, how do you see this developing? We've seen DXPs and CMS systems that you can add into your shop environment. Um, what do you think is the overall trend that we're seeing in the development happening there? Yeah. So the trend is going towards decoupling, um, which means you're separating um, the different elements of your, of your shop system setup um, you have a specialized uh, platform for your backend, for your shipping and pricing, um, and you have a specialized uh, system for your personalization, and you have a specialized system for your front end. Um, and this is what you would call a, a decoupled front end. Um, big e commerce retailers, big corporates have known this for a long time and have used this for a long time um, because they were able to reap the most benefits from it. Um, they've been developing their own um, decoupled front ends um, for reasons like uh, much faster uh, page load times, um, better customization possibilities um, for the user journeys, um, um, as well as um, optimizations of uh, SEO optimizations that traditional um, monolithic shop system just couldn't uh, deliver. Um, and likewise, big shop systems are also uh, have also kind of seen the benefits of that, which is why they're, off they're offering um, APIs that support the decoupling of front ends. So they're making all their data available to, uh, to front ends that, that want to consume the data and, and build something amazing with it. And in the past, this has only been possible uh, for big corporates because it was a very costly undertaking. And it only really made sense if you could drive a lot of revenue by those uh, front ends had, had really deep pockets um, that could afford the, the teams of developers you needed to build uh, a decoupled front end. Um, but what we're seeing now with the drive to um, direct to consumer, lots of smaller, uh, very small and medium sized brands um, kind of discovering e-commerce or drive, going more and more into uh, direct to consumer e-commerce, building their own online shops. And they want something similar. They want to compete um, on page speed, on SEO ranking, on user experience with the big guys. And this is sort of where Styler now fits in. Um, we've, we've, we're enabling the, the, the smaller and the medium sized shops to reap the same benefits um, as the big corporations do, um, but for a, a fraction of the cost. And that's quite interesting because I think um, over the past couple of years, we've seen big new e-commerce systems for enterprise coming along saying we don't deliver a front end. And uh, now we see companies like BigCommerce who are rather targeting small to medium sized businesses to do the same. But um, it seems like there's so far no real solution out there that caters for the front end development of small budget companies. Yeah. Um, whereas um, if you're a big corporation, um, obviously you would go with an agency that, that would do that. Yeah. Um, and there's so far no real product that productizes the entire front end development, right? Yeah. Um, so this, this is something that uh, hopefully we can, we can bring to the table and allow therefore small to medium sized companies to 
to embrace the benefits that there are in, in this whole headless development. I think one of one of the driving forces of um, the headless development, um, if you want to call it like this, is that um, there's an abundance of devices, an abundance of use cases for a shop, um, and that's why more and more the shop systems they withdraw from the front end space uh, because it's just getting too wild and too much. And at the same time, there are small microservices, individual players on the market um, who can deliver a better experience, right? Um, how do you see Styler fitting into this sort of composable commerce landscape, if you will, as it's described? Yeah, yeah. So Styler is one of the components that you can um, use to build up your entire e-commerce stack. Um, you might use something like uh, BigCommerce as, as your backend um, uh, personalization uh, provider to kind of deliver individualized, uh, personalized um, search results or product feeds um, for your customers. Um, you might integrate uh, somebody like Algolia as your search provider. Um, and just like that, uh, Styler can be your front end um, that then plugs into, um, into BigCommerce. And then from BigCommerce, um, the idea with a decoupled uh, front end is that you can have a web front end, but you can also push your uh, products into social media, into different marketplaces, all from the same e-commerce backend. Um, uh, but then the web front end um, that drives both the desktop as well as the mobile experience of your customers um, uh, will, be, will be done by style. Yeah. So we can talk in a little bit about how um, actually I manage this whole thing when I'm a small vendor. Yeah. Um, but first of all, let's uh, drag in Alex to our conversation yeah. um, because um, what's interesting to understand maybe from a technical perspective, what has actually changed now in the headless world as opposed to the monolithic world that we've been seeing so far, where you had one player that produced everything, uh, the big names, and then you could go with it. What, what's changing now technically? On the one side, you have monolithic systems, which um, where everyone provides everything. They are built over time. They get more and more complex. They have a lot of functionality to cover, like um, stock management, the front end part, um, delivery, fulfillment, and so on. Um, and uh, it's all very tightly coupled and connected. So when someone um, serves the product page and uh, tries to buy a product, there are a lot of things that are executed, which over time grow more and more, which are not necessarily required just to view the product as which is some some information on a static web page. But in the background, there's a lot of ha things happening, which makes things slow, hard to maintain and hard to extend over time. Therefore, uh, people as well, the trend not only in headless, but as well microservices, which tries to uh, decouple things and um, make them individually developable, <laughs> if you want, that as well allows you to go in the direction of um, composable commerce, as you mentioned beforehand, so that every provider can just provide his uh, little um, slice of the cake. Um, and this allows us then to focus really just on this one part to deliver uh, fast and converting um, front end to the end user by utilizing all the shopping capabilities that the headless uh, systems like um, commerce tools, but as well, of course, big commerce and Shopify that try to go in this headless direction um, provide to us. So we can pull in the data from them and uh, use that to generate the product pages only when there are changes as well. And then all we do is drop the static files on a server and serve them from there. Every time there's a change in the product data, we just regenerate the file, and that reduces a lot of the complexity that you usually have when someone requests a website, because it's just always there. It's just one step file as you would have on your local computer. And um, there we can focus on optimizing that file to be then um, ideal for page speed or SEO, uh, PWA, and so on. That means um, the so-called API is becoming the main language in which systems communicate, right? So the data is being transferred in a, in a readable style that every microservice then can, can read and, and work with. Uh, now, what you've described sounds um, crazy complex. And uh, if I'm just a small vendor selling shoes, I have no idea what you're talking about. So what is now changing um, in the landscape when Styler hits the place and we offer our solution to, to vendors? 
Um, yeah, there are uh, three parts that uh, we change for the vendor. Uh, one is that um, we have an editor that allows him to change everything in the storefront himself. So in the shop systems beforehand, he could create some content pages, um, but you could usually not uh, change the product or category pages uh, yourself. You usually need an agency to then build your theme or extensions or uh, uh, change things for you. And uh, this costs a lot of money, it costs time, it's effort, and small vendors can't afford that. So usually they had to live with what was provided out of the box, kind of, or in some themes. Um, the second aspect is um, the page speed that others can currently still not provide. If you go around and check the page speed of different shop systems, you usually see scores around 30 to 60. Like if you go on Google Page Speed, Lighthouse, and try to check the page in there. Um, and we reach scores from around 90 on mobile, and on desktop it's even 99, 100 uh, in that area. So um, just in, in very simple terms, do I need to code? Do I need to be a developer to, uh, to get live with Styler? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can, everything is self-service. You just need to click and choose the settings and the themes you want to have. And um, the options we as well provide ready-made components that allow you, like you don't even need to drag images around or resize them. This is all done for you. You just choose from different options then that then automatically arrange the content so that it fits and it automatically gets as well converted to mobile so that you don't need to manually adjust it. You can, of course, still go in and adjust the mobile view to something different, uh, but it's out of the box, has a good, let's say, base to, to work with. Okay, so um, let's let's maybe uh, try to, to come up with an example. So if I'm a small vendor, Fabian, and I'm selling shoes, and I really don't have a lot of time, I come to I'm I'm live on Backmars with my shop. Then I want to um, have a faster page, simpler editing because I don't want to drag in a, an agency every time I want to make a change. I come to Styler. What what is happening? What what do I do? I see the the page there. What do I do then? Mm -hmm. um, so we've uh, just launched our Big Commerce Marketplace app. Um, and in your Bigmas uh, backend, you can uh, go to the marketplace, search for Styler, um, and click install. After you've, you've clicked install um, and selected a, a password, you have your new front end ready set up. Um, it's then running on a, um, on a demo domain that's hosted by us. It doesn't do anything to your, ex to your existing front end, there's zero risk involved for you. Um, you will have a parallel front end to your existing website. So your existing website for now remains untouched. Um, you can then log into the Skylar system um, where we provide you out of the box with um, kind of a boilerplate um, shop that follows a lot of the best uh, practices of, of e-commerce. It gives you all the standard um, pages that you need um, as a base to start working on. You can start adapting it and, and changing it around in our editor, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, but yeah, really important to, to know when you install Styler, nothing will change to your, to your normal existing shop. Um, only once you're ready and you've customized your, your Styler front end uh, to the level that you're happy to go live with it, um, can you then push the go live button. And um, before then, um, you can just play around with it. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we're offering um, a free trial period until at least until you're live, probably a little bit later as well, depending on your um, on your business type and so on, um, but there's no risk, no cost involved in the beginning, um, and it's very easy to install. You don't need a developer; it's just click and and you're there. At this point, um, you can then go into all the individual pages that we are offering to you um, and start editing or adding content. In our um, visual, what you see is what you get. Um, editor experience. You can see the pages you have, you can change content, you can write texts, you can upload images, arrange them, um, add buttons, videos, sliders, um, uh, all sorts of, um, all the possible content um, components that you know of many other um, editors um, and build your pages like that. You can, of course, create new pages as well for, your, for a marketing campaign, for example. It's one click away, you have a new page. Um, and build a, build a layout out of that. Um, Alex, uh, Alex mentioned earlier the uh, capability of changing product detail pages as well as category pages. Um, this is something where traditional monolithic shop systems sometimes are not, not as good. And here um, we are um, 
giving you um, style templates that let you uh, pick and choose what your product detail page uh, will look like. Um, of course, it will always show the individual product that they're for, but you can add different text um, or com uh, content elements to it, just like on the category listing page as well. Um, so you have full control over, over your front end. Um, we're pulling in a lot of the data that you already have in BigCommerce. So you don't need to uh, manage your data twice. Um, all your product data will remain in BigCommerce and you will keep maintaining that in BigCommerce. It will automatically be synced with the Styler front end, just like the category data, um, pricing, the checkout, taxes, shipping, all of this stays in BigCommerce, stays managed in BigCommerce and Styler pulls it in automatically. Also here, there's, there's uh, no development or coding you need to do. Um, it's all doable by a, a, a digitally versed um, person, a marketer, and a digital marketer, a founder, um, a, a business owner will be very comfortable operating in our system. Okay, perfect. So there's two systems I need to maintain then. For example, BigCommerce as the shop base. Yep. I um, do edit my products and everything there. Yep. And then there's a display layer over it, which is the entire website, yep. if you will, yep. um, where everything is being displayed and that's running on Styler. Correct. So, okay, perfect. Um, now, um, I've come to the page, I've, I've set it up. Um, how long does it take me to, to really get running? Yeah. So, um, the, the fastest possible uh, way to go live, I would say, if you're really committed and um, you want to get something live, um, we, you can probably do it in a couple of days. Um, like how of, many? Of having a proper live um, website where all your, your content is in there, um, your marketing landing pages, um, and so on and so forth. In theory, you could actually go live within the first hour if you wanted to. Yeah. If you don't, didn't want yeah. to add any, any of, your, of your own content, it's that yeah. simple. You can just like install it, check it, click go, and you you can be live within hours. Running right. on one of those templates that we provide, exactly. which are best yeah. practice and, and yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. yeah. You can pick your theme, change your colors mm -hmm. um, of your of your elements, do some basic styling, upload your logo, yeah. um, and then you can be up and running within yeah one hour, couple of hours. If you want to add a little bit more content, refine it, uh, make it your own. Mm -hmm. Consider a couple of days before you kind of get to the point where you go like, hey, this is really cool. I want to push this live. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, you can take more time if you want to. If yeah. you have a lot of content um, that you want to bring online, um, if you have a lot of uh, pictures and peripheral data around your products and so on and so forth, it can take a little bit longer, but that's really up to you. Yeah. So um, now, obviously, I don't want to have just uh, an off-the-shelf website. Mm -hmm. I want to present my products in the way that I think is best. Yeah. And I want to be unique. What are the limitations uh, of the software there? Yeah. So uh, at the moment, what we offer is um, a uh, theming and styling um, editing capability. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll be able to pick from a number of, of themes that kind of go in the most basic kind of directions of um, different um, industries and, and website styles that give you really good um, base um, to customize from. Mm -hmm. And then those themes, uh, which are all included, by the way, um, there are no extra fees or anything for that. Um, those themes you can then uh, customize certain style elements from. So you can customize things like um, distances between elements. So how dense is your information? A fashion brand, an uh, inspiring fashion brand might go um, really low density, um, large images, lots of white space between elements. Um, whereas a kind of uh, e-commerce, uh, sorry, a um, digital consumer products a company which has lots of information to show about the products that they're selling, they might go for a higher information density. Mm -hmm. um, you can, of course, customize your, your, your logo, um, your header and your footer, um, what you're showing there. You can customize colors of your buttons. Um, you can choose your own fonts. Um, you can... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, change change all sorts of, of colors, basically, of lots of different elements. Yep. The great thing about this, um, you only need to do it once, and it will be applied automatically everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, every time you create a button or every time you add a text component, have to style it individually. It will just, by default, show up in in the style that you've chosen at, chosen at the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. On top of that, if you're not quite sure what your style will be or if you're changing it in the future, mm -hmm. 
um, you can start working in a default font, um, add all your content, and once you've chosen your font, you apply it, and it automatically gets applied everywhere without you having to go back into every single component and reapplying. Yeah. Um, and this is specifically true for the products. So I may have thousands of products uh, in category pages, and I don't want to edit them all singular or on a singular individual basis. So mm -hmm. that's why yep. we have a feature called uh, layout standards. Yep. Maybe so, you can explain that. Mm -hmm. So in the layout standards, um, the layout standards give you a um, a standard of how all your pages uh, are rendered. So uh, we have uh, a base standard that standard for every single page, including the uh, products and the categories. So in this standard, you define what your header and your footer looks like. Um, and then the content gets rendered in between the header and the footer. Um, so in there, you would, for example, upload your logo. Um, you would define your, uh, your menu. Um, by the way, the categories we pull in from BigCommerce automatically, so you don't have to uh, manage them twice. Um, so we offer a kind of a, a mega menu that has your categories uh, automatically in there. Um, you can add um, you can add uh, uh, promotional information into the header if you, for example, have a sale on that you want to promote at every single page of your website, or if you're offering free shipping, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can put that in your header. Header, and likewise, then in the footer, you also can control that in the. Um, in the default uh, in the default uh, base, and uh, you put your contact information there, your social media channels, um, your imprint, linking to your about pages, and all of that. Um, so that's what you what you kind of can do there. And then on top of that, um, we have different um, uh, styling defaults for products and for categories. So if on your product pages. Um, you want to display SEO content um, that's the same on every product page, or you want to show your uh, unique selling points. Maybe you have three USPs that you want to show below every product on every product yep. page. You can uh, define those just once, and they will then display on every product page. Not on every content page, but every product page. <laughs> Likewise, the same for category listing pages. Um, if you, for example, have um, SEO text that you want to make sure shows on either all category pages or just on some. We have a way to control what text is showing um, on which category page, for example. Um, very useful for SEO relevant text. If you want your categories to be found um, on, on in the search engines quite prominently, um, you can control that in the, in the uh, base for categories. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Now, uh, Alex, say if... Um We've just heard from Fabian what the limitations are of our platform. So um, you have um, elements you can choose from, fonts, colors, stylings, etc. What if you want to go really crazy and uh, you say you want to have a lot of um, animations and, and different very customized individual styles and effects on your page and you have a little bit uh, of budget left over? Um, we integrate with agencies. How, do, how does that work? What can they do and, and how does this go together? Yeah. Um, yeah, agency can agencies can um, in the end adjust everything that is on the page. So everything, every page has consists of modules, and they can replace or customize, like replace and cust do a custom module for every part that is in there. We provide some helper methods so that they can reuse elements that we provide, but um, otherwise, as was mentioned beforehand. You can integrate your personalization provider and um, everything that is in the front end um, that needs some JavaScript or some HTML can be added. Uh, this consists usually of three parts. Um, you have a template that the agency needs to provide that is kind of the HTML structure, what you would usually see on the page there. Um, then you can provide a JavaScript file for dynamic behavior. So the static part is um, displaying the content, and you have maybe there a button or some functionality, maybe to get a quote. And when you press the quote button, your JavaScript executes to send a message to your quote tool or provider. And uh, the third part is a JSON schema. That's a configuration file that allows the agency to decide 
how you can configure that module. So you can say, okay, this module has certain settings. It allows a text input, like a headline, an image, or a product, um, and has, I don't know, show bold prices or some other setting that you would come up with. And with this, you can then customize every part that you have in the page. Of course, like the more you customize, the more effort it is. So the biggest benefit you have when you just go um, with all the standards that we provide. But of course, like when you have the capabilities to um, to invest additional resources, you are free to do so. Thank you. So um, just to summarize up to this point, uh, we have a software that sits on top of a shop system in which you have a separate layer for displaying everything. Um, it's um, easy to integrate for anyone without any IT resource and, and knowledge. Um, and you can get going with it with a, a really nice template selection within basically a few hours. Um, if you want to customize it, there's lots of things you can do on the platform. If you want to go further, there's great ways to integrate with agencies. Um, I want to now switch over to um, the benefits that you have when you work with such a decoupled system. So, um, because there's no reason uh, or no wonder actually that um, all the systems are switching to decoupled um, uh, mode and, and approach. Not only because it's easier to maintain, but also because there's fundamental improvements to your overall system uh, that, you can, that you have. So um, maybe we talk about speed first. What's the technical underlying element of why a website that's sitting on top of Styler is dramatically faster than anything you had before? Page speed is um, consisting of many different factors. So it's not like one thing that makes a site uh, fast. And that makes it as well usually hard for others to um, get to a certain point because you have many constraints that are in there. Um, we start, of course, with the defaults, like providing a CDN, um, providing images in different uh, sizes. So we automatically resize images. We deliver them in modern formats. We are compressing and minifying the HTML and the CSS. Um, but these are like kind of standards, I would say. Um, as mentioned, the, that we are decoupled um, allows us to, or we, we approach it a bit different than usually, let's say. Usually, as um, mentioned, you have uh, websites where someone requests the page. It then tries, goes to a server, which has a template. This is loaded. Then the product that is requested gets fetched from the database. So another request is made to another server, usually, that has a database in it. It fetches the data from there. It analyzes the data, certain conditions are met, pricing, is it a discount or whatever, and then HTML is generated and served back to the end user. That, of course, the bigger the system gets, the slower this will be over time, and we have cut this whole process away. Um, we inverted the part by generating the files beforehand. So not on request of the user we generate the file, but when the shop owner changes the content. That is the moment when we generate the file and we just generate the static um, part and push it on a um, file storage, you could say. Um, another part is, of course, JavaScript. So many pages are very heavy on JavaScript. So we tried to reduce everything to the, max, to the minimum. <laughs> um, that means that we try to do everything where possible without JavaScript. But of course, we still have JavaScript for dynamic behavior. So when something is possible just with HTML and CSS in a responsive way, so you can resize and everything looks good and pretty, but uh, as soon as you have dynamic behavior, like for example, the login, the cart, um, adding a product, um, or as well, automatic rotating sliders, product sliders, and other things, there's just a very small JavaScript that is just responsible for that functionality. And we only embed it in pages that have that functionality. So only when you have a product slider that has automatic sliding, we add the JavaScript port to the page. Otherwise, uh, it's just not there. And that makes it very slim. Um, and this is especially important for mobile devices, um, because on the one side, they don't have that much uh, CPU power. And oftentimes, nowadays, you have single page applications. That means you have one big, big JavaScript file that contains all the page types that you have and all the logic that is used on all pages together in one file. That makes it large and is as well heavy on the CPU because the mobile phone needs to process all of this. Um, that is the one aspect why it's good to have less JavaScript. The other aspect is as well on a mobile phone, you have usually, um, depending on where you are, on your location, you might have a very small bandwidth as well to fetch files. So 
the, the more you can reduce the things that are required to make the page work, the better this is. And finally, we provide as well a PWA, the Progressive Web App, which allows even to work completely offline. So um, when you don't have an internet connection, you still see at least the page coming up. Of course, you cannot directly buy the product. Um, you might not be able to see if you go on a different product page that is not cached, you will not see the image, of course. But um, it still provides a better experience as well to the end user. Thank you very much. Um, so it all sounds really technical as well, um, of course. Uh, but um, the underlying uh, effects and the results are quite staggering. Uh, Fabio, maybe you can, you can make a comparison. What is the average site speed that, that we see yeah. in the market and what is the average site speed on Styla yeah. in comparison? Uh, site speeds we're seeing for e-commerce sites uh, on e-commerce shops um, range between 5 out of 100 <laughs> to maybe uh, on, 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 on a lot of pages to maybe 50 uh, on already very good um, pages. Um, which is a 50 out of 100. Yeah, which is the page speed score that the Google page speed provides. Yeah. Correct. So everybody can check their, their page speed on the Google Lighthouse um, test site that yeah. Google provides. Yeah. So they they provide a, a site for it. We can we can link to it in the comments um, yeah. or the description. Um, or it's also built in the in the Chrome browser. You might already uh, know about it. So the Google calculates the site speed on many many different factors and. Um, kind of comes up with uh, a number between 0 and 100. Um, 0 is really bad, <laughs> and 100 is extremely good. Um, and yeah, as, as I said, in the e-commerce space, we're seeing site speed between 5, which is very, very slow. It takes, uh, it takes many, many seconds for the pages to load on, on mobile phones, like 13, 15 seconds upwards, um, to site speeds yeah, between the, in the 40 to 60 range which is still several seconds um, for every page load um, that your shopper will have to wait <laughs> yeah. until the site is there. So the effect of that is that shoppers lose page loss. Um, they might leave <laughs> completely <laughs> and not purchase anything because they just can't be bothered to wait. They might be on a, on a train and have to get off <laughs> and don't have time exactly. to, to continue yeah. shopping and they will then forget about it. Or they will only buy the essentials that they really, really need. They'll find the one thing, check out with it, yep. and leave because they don't have any more time. So with Styler, though, our page speeds um, on slow down, really bad mobile phones um, are in the range of uh, 90 out of 100. So we're seeing 90 plus minus 5, so 85 to 95 speeds, which is extremely good on very old and slowed down devices. Um, so that means our pages are extremely fast and even for users with older devices um, and on slow mobile connections and spotty mobile connections will still experience a great site speed um, on, your, on your site. The result of that um, is that we're seeing a much higher conversion rate so people don't drop off. They do actually go through to the checkout, to the checkout and buy the things they want to. We're seeing a much longer dwell time um, because people don't get frustrated. Shopping is uh, enjoyable and joyful uh, for the users because they click on, ah, this product looks cool. They click on it, bam, it's there. There's no waiting time. Um, uh, so we're seeing higher average basket values because people add more products to the basket because they're enjoying browsing. Um, they get inspired and yep. jump from product to product to product because it's so easy and so quickly end up adding them to the basket and checking out with them. Which means they see more pages as well. They it's, see more uh, pages. Just every yeah. page is instantly there. Yeah. And then obviously you, you're wandering around, you're checking yeah. out what's there yeah. instead of just waiting, 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 and then being frustrated and dropping yeah. off. Yeah. So exactly. you can compare it to uh, a, 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 a warehouse where everything is on one floor and you're just wandering really easily between the different aisles and you come from aisle to aisle to aisle and you add things to your basket as opposed to uh, a warehouse where every single product is on a different floor and you have to climb up the stairs <laughs> between yep. every product. You will only get two levels high yeah. and you will leave again. <laughs> Absolutely. Very understandable. So just a question. Alex just expla explained to us the technical setup. Is this something that um, with those high page speeds is actually possible in a monolithic environment where you just take everything out of one hand? Yeah. So, um, 
No monolithic shop system um, that we know of uses um, this technology, um, and it's it's they 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 can't they can't achieve the pace speed um, that we achieve. It's it's for them it's impossible unless they really change their systems and put in the R and D that we've put in over the last couple of years to yeah. to make this happen. This is yeah. not a, a simple feat, and um, many have have tried this. Some really big corporates have managed something similar at great great costs to them and it makes sense to them because they um, sell a lot of merchandise um, um, however we're bringing this to anybody who wants it at a very very low cost because yep. we've done it once and now we can offer it to everybody in a in a very scalable and easy to use way yeah that means usually what you're describing is a super large enterprise setup right Correct. costs yes. at least six digits to get it up and running uh, seven uh, <laughs> that's, that's the seven um, and uh, and then you may come to results that we're offering just out of the box yeah. um, at basically no pricing at all. Uh, we're right. going to talk about pricing in a second. Yeah. Um, now there's um, different studies out there that compare the results uh, or the, the impact that a speedy website has on your conversion rate. You already said it. Um, and uh, one is by HubSpot. Uh, maybe we can link it in the comments as well. And it says that um, if your website loads um, in five seconds, five to six seconds, then you have a conversion rate of 0.6 on average on all the HubSpot pages they compared and it's shooting up to 1.9 percent average conversion which is more than triple um, the conversion if it's um, two seconds or, or lower mm -hmm. now if our sites load in one to two seconds on mobile I think this gives quite a good explanation yep. as to why there's much more revenue to gain yep. from a speed increase yep. of your website yep. um, okay Fantastic. Now, um, let's talk about what other effects there are from the speed increase. Alex, maybe we can, uh, we can talk about that for, for a moment. So, speed is great for conversion. We know this now. But what else is speed good for? Uh, Google has um, launched a change to their search algorithm um, in the last year, in which they have in, um, included the so-called experience. Can you explain maybe a little bit what that is and in which um, numeric factors uh, play a big role in getting your search ranking up? Yes. So, um, page speed is as well important for uh, SEO because Google ranks uh, with actually, I mean, there are many factors by which they rank, but they recently added the core web vitals as an important part um, for the ranking. And page speed is one aspect in that to get a higher score there. Um, you have different aspects there. One is, um, of course, uh, how fast the page loads, and this is as well in impacted by the JavaScript and so on, because when uh, time to interact, when the user can actually work with the page and not only when he sees um, the first part, which is as well important, of course. Um, and as well, you have a cumulative layout shift, which means that, um, which is more targeted on the user experience. It's actually not necessarily the pure page speed of it. it affects it as well depending on how it's built but uh, that means that you have maybe experienced it yourself when you're on a site and you want to click a button and suddenly an advertisement or anything else pops up and moves it down and instead of the button you click the advertisement and you're like ah damn it so and we try to avoid this as well by our static pre-rendered pages we have everything in css and everything is already there when the page is loaded so things don't move down um but uh, as well, you need to be careful when you add additional third-party tools or customizations, of course, because they might not watch out for that. Because this is as well what oftentimes introduces this kind of problems, that you add some, some system that maybe puts no focus on page speed or on uh, user experience, and then you have, like, uh, then the pages as well might be impacted in regards to page speed. Thank you, Alex. Um, so I mentioned that I want to talk about pricing. Um, we deliberately uh, created a pricing that it, that makes it easy for anyone to start working with us uh, which means that our service is entirely for free for businesses that do generate less than 50,000 euros of GMV per year so you can uh, go on with it there's no setup fee nothing and you can create a business for yourself for anybody who's um, already on a running business and creates a um, volume of, of merchandise that is above 50,000 euros, we take half a percentage of the transactions. So a very small amount that allows you to grow risk-free with us 
into your future. So that's it uh, for our webinar for today. Um, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Fabian. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have some, some nice evening today in Ibiza still. And um, hopefully, this was insightful to you. If you want to know more, check out steiner.com. And we'll be happy to answer your questions there. Thank you, and have a good evening. Bye.